Now, Mr. Pengallet. Thank you, uh, Mr. President, and I rise to strongly support the uh, motion by the Honourable Tammy Franks. Uh, with uh, the Honourable Franks and other MPs, including uh, Caroline Powell, the local member for Elder, and Labor's Jane Stinson, whose electorate takes in the school zone, I attended a parents and friends community uh, meeting on March the 12th, in which the future of Springbank Secondary College was passionately discussed. I met with the uh, principal, Wendy House, who uh, coincidentally attended the same high school as me, uh, Underdale, as well as the enthusiastic convener for the Friends of Springbank Secondary College, Danielle Duffield, but more importantly, the parents and the kids who love going to that school. One parent told me how it has dramatically changed the life of his son. A once troubled boy who avoided school so much he often refused to leave the vehicle when he was being dropped off. Now he looks forward to it every day. There was another with uh, learning difficulties who has responded to the nurturing philosophy espoused by Ms House and her dedicated staff. Uh, one child made a poster which she handed to me and uh, Mr President, I just seek leave to be able to show it to uh, uh, the members in here. It's not offensive, it's not political. No props. Okay. Well, not it's, Pangello, no props. Okay, well, it's not Same a prop. Uh, it just it, it, it emphasises the message that I'm trying to deliver here. Well, I didn't hold it up, Mr. President. I expected well, that you, you would. If you hold it up, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll, I'll continue. Uh, well, it's outrageous, Mr. Outrageous. Pangello. Please. Uh, <laughs> Put, put the prop down. You know, it was an eight-year-old child who absolutely loves her school, Mr. President, yeah. and loves going there, and uh, is, is, is so thankful of, of the environment in there. Uh, I also met an Indigenous teenager and his mum, who told me of the long trip they undertake uh, each day to get there, and it was so worth, uh, worthwhile to his mental well-being. The students are benefiting from partnerships with Flinders University, the Australian Science and Mathematics School and Basketball SA's Academy. The stories I heard that night from parents whose children have had a positive experience that they may not have had at other public schools resonated strongly uh, with me, Mr President. This school has a special unit which conducts specialist programs for kids with learning problems and disabilities. They are responding in a way that wouldn't be possible in a mainstream school like Unley High, which is where the minister intends to amalgamate Springbank. I know what these parents are going through, and they hold legitimate fears that their kids may well fall through the cracks in a larger and less welcoming school environment. Now, that's not to say that Unley is not a good school. By all accounts from people I know, it is one of the best public schools in the inner south and has been historically. In fact, um, uh, this is where our first female prime minister, Julia Gillard, attended. There are numerous alumni, uh, lots of MPs, Mr President, former Premier, the late John Bannon, Michael Atkinson, the former Speaker, Mark Butler, the member for Hindmarsh, Amanda Rishworth, the member for Kingston, a couple of state governors, uh, Sir Mark Oliphant and Dr Keith Seaman, Simon Goodwin, the ex-Crows player, which, President, you would be familiar with, and current Melbourne coach, a host of stir greats like John Halbert, the ICAC commissioner, the Honourable Bruce Lander, and on it goes. Uh, the question is, Mr President, is it the right one for Springbank's cohort? I will go back to my own personal experience and that of my wife Angie with our son Connor about the challenges parents face dealing with the unknown. Now, when Connor was seven, he was enrolled in the junior school at Mercedes. He was unsettled and had trouble fitting in. Social distancing was actually practised there by the kids in his class. They avoided Connor. He was without friends. It was actually uh, uh, quite heartbreaking for me to see him playing alone at recess and lunch breaks. He wasn't invited to birthday parties. 
We knew he was a bright boy and quite focused on particular things, but we couldn't put a finger on it. Neither could the school. One abrupt senior teacher even told us Connor's behaviour was so poor that he wouldn't amount to much in life and was unlikely to finish school. My wife went looking for answers the school couldn't give us. A wonderful psychologist named Dr Lindy Peterson and an education advocate, Mark LeMessurier, opened our eyes to Connor's unique world. He was diagnosed as having Asperger's syndrome and on the higher end of the spectrum. Even then, there was little, if anything, available in our school system to deal with children like Connor. We were advised to play, place him in a smaller school environment. We chose St Joseph's at Kingswood. And uh, I'll say here we'll be eternally grateful for the great support and mentoring he received from a very caring principal, Mr Justin Caviotto. Mr President, by year eight, Connor was ready to return to Mercedes and prove a point to that senior teacher that he wasn't worthless. In 2017, he was Ducks of Mercedes achieving an ATAR of 99.8 and three SACE Merit Awards. He is in his third year at Flinders University and is flying high in his double degree of law and international relations. He sees Asperger's syndrome as a gift, not a hindrance. Even if they may be socially awkward, they make up for it in the strong determination to succeed. Uh, my only one unfortunate uh, uh, thing with Connor, we often have many political discussions and uh, uh, I haven't quite convinced him that he, uh, he should switch sides. Um, where it changed for Connor was a spontaneous initiative in 2007 by my wife Angie with a few other mothers with children on the spectrum. Determined that their kids could, should reach their potential, they started the not-for-profit Gold Foundation running social skills programs using a meagre $15,000 grant from Angela Condis and the Advertiser Foundation, and we are thankful for it. From eight boys in 2007, it is now 661 children of various ages registered and attending programs at their Camden premises. Mr President, the point I'm making here is that you never take hope away from parents and children. It can destroy confidence. Mr President, our public schools are really only now grappling with these complex children with special needs. Springbank is one of them and by all accounts is doing exceptionally well in this area. Smaller environments do produce much better outcomes. Experts in this field have confirmed this. Now, the Education Minister, John Gardner, wants to take all that good work they are doing away. Reneging on the accolades he was freely handing out in March last year that the school had a rich future with its smaller environment and a caring focus, and that there was this promise of a $10 million upgrade. Well, fast forward to March 4 this year, and without consulting the school community, he announces a ministerial review by press release because the school isn't hitting its targets and growing student numbers. I suspect it's partly his bean counting bureaucrats telling him to ditch the school and absorb its 167 students elsewhere and let's flog the huge site to developers. He also announced the $32 million upgrade to make Unley an even larger school with more students particularly when Year 7 go into high schools. For expediency, he's appointed a review committee headed by an experienced and respected DECD regional director. It includes the principal and members of the governing council from Springbank and Unley. They'll go through the motions, Mr President. However, you get the impression the minister has already signed Springbank's death warrant, particularly when he found $10 million to spend at nearby, nearby Urbray High School? Could it be the $10 million that was originally earmarked for Springbank? Mr President, I can see Springbank from my home. I remember the school well from the days as Doors Road High, when it had about 1,000 students. It later morphed into Pasadena High. Door Park and surrounding suburbs of St Mary's, Bedford Park, Panorama, Pasadena, 
and Clavelli Park and Coonerall Lake Gardens were strong working class areas in its heyday in the 60s and 70s. Today they are undergoing gentrification and redevelopment. More younger families are moving in because it's become affordable. Their kids are going to need a nearby school, not having to catch a couple of buses to get to and from Unley High or Mitcham and other schools. And then, of course, Mr President, there are the special needs kids. Who is going to care for them? Don't count on it happening at Unley when it's bulging at the seams. I urge the Minister to appreciate the enormous value and good that's happening at Springbank College and give it the time and opportunities to expand on Wendy House's exceptional achievements by abandoning the review. In saying that, we warmly endorse the member's motion.